Imagine that there are innumerable extraterrestrial civilizations in the universe and in our direct cosmic neighborhood, but we cannot see them because, among other reasons, they move at a completely different speed than we do, or because they simply exist in parallel universes that have so far also eluded our perception. This or something similar was a thesis of the Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardashev. In the 1960s, he created a scale of three types of civilizations measured by their technical, intellectual, and social development. To put it in a nutshell, on a scale of 1 to 7, we humans have not even reached level 1 yet. But what if we could achieve that in the perhaps not so distant future? And what if we could make it to evolutionary level 7? You'll find out all about that now in this video. But before we start with the ideas of Nikolai Kardashev and take a fantastic look into the future, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel now and activate the notification bell. At the end of the video, we'd also appreciate a like if you enjoyed it. We start now with Kardashev's ideas and his three-level scale. The Civilizations Model of Nikolai Kardashev If we believe the ideas of Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardashev, there are a whole lot of intelligent civilizations in space. Kardashev, who conducted research on detecting intelligent life forms in space in the 1960s, in what was then the Soviet Union, concluded that there should be thousands, if not millions, of civilizations. Kardashev recognized that as life forms evolved, there would have to be certain similarities within the cosmos. He measured civilizations by such values as energy requirements, ways of generating and using it, social considerations, and opportunities for creative influence within the cosmos. You heard right. According to Kardashev, advanced civilizations would not only have to be able to build houses and factories or spaceships, as we do at present, Highly developed living beings would have to possess abilities to control the universe and the material phenomena in it and to transform them at will. If that sounds exciting, then stay tuned because it goes much further. Kardashev has become known to us in the West only recently, mainly by futurists and UFO friends. In the USSR, the man was anything but a fantasist or a crank. Kardashev belonged to the most respected researchers of his time and was a member of the Academy of Sciences. Kardashev assumed that every life form that develops intelligence needs energy. At the beginning of our extraordinary development on this planet was the ability to use fire and thus a source of energy. Fire enabled us to cook food and presumably the resulting changes in protein structure led to our brains becoming what they are today. Basically, we still use fire as our primary source of energy today. We use it to heat our homes, to colonize areas for which we are not biologically made, and we use combustion techniques and electricity for our progress, which in its innermost essence is nothing more than fire. According to Kardashev, there must be other, far simpler and more highly developed forms of energy use in space. According to his logic, the galaxy must meet the energy needs of every civilization that lives in it, and that, in fact, without effects such as pollution or effort. So far, we humans have not found these types of energy. Presumably, however, other civilizations have these capabilities. We'll now look at the original Kardashev scale, which divided civilizations into three types. Later, we'll introduce you to an expanded model and address the exciting question of what your life would be like if you lived in a Type 7 civilization. Type 1, the Planetary Civilization. This type of planetary civilization has reached a level of consciousness thanks to which it knows that it is a civilization on a planet in space. Practically, this means that such a society has installed an energy utilization system around the star and uses the power directly on site. A thought model for this is the so-called Dyson Sphere, a construct capable of capturing the star's power and harnessing it. How and from which building blocks such a solar power plant is made, however, was not specified. It could not be specified because the astronomer Dyson belonged to a civilization of the type 0.7. We can imagine this somehow, but practically we cannot implement it. This is incumbent of later generations, 
which will have technologies unknown to us today, much as we have technologies today which were simply unimaginable for preceding people. As Type 2 civilizations continue to develop, they will be able to harness the energy needs for long-distance space travel, for example, even through stars of neighboring and uninhabited star systems. These societies have also achieved full control over their planet. This means these people can influence the weather and climate, deflect asteroids, or even control the orbits of other planets in the system. Socially, such beings would presumably manage themselves largely independently as one state or one planet systems. In addition to high technological developments, these civilizations have achieved a very high degree of social equality, harmony, and interconnectedness. Type 3 – The Galactic Civilization A Level 3 civilization has developed far beyond its own solar system. The total power of this civilization and thus its energy consumption is about 4-1037 watts. These living beings are able to tap into the energy system of the universe. Today, one knows that this energy source is very probably the zero-point field or originates from dark matter. Here we come again to the limited possibilities of a civilization like ours. Albert Einstein suspected already 100 years ago that the zero-point field must contain a gigantic quantity of energy, but we cannot measure this at present, however. Living beings of this kind maintain, very probably, colonies in the whole universe, are socially and physically very highly developed, move with superluminal speed, and might even have bodies that are hardly visible on the material level. In the following years, space theorists developed the ideas of the Russian astronomer further. The result was finally a seven-stage model, which includes the latest findings of quantum physics and multiverse theories. We look now at the fantastic possibilities living beings of levels 4 to 7 have, and what a human life on level 7 would look like. Type 4 – The Programmers of the Universe A civilization of Type 4 has completely seen through the construction plan of the cosmos and made it its own. Like computer programmers, these beings can rearrange space, create new planetary systems and material phenomena, and make things disappear that they do not want. These beings have created a high degree of spiritual connectedness and communicate telepathically with the entire collective. Type 4 beings have overcome all physical laws and use regularities that are unknown to us today. Presumably, these entities have robots, which are almost as highly developed as themselves. They know no work, no diseases, and no troubles. They draw energy through the spirit from the universe itself. Type 5 – The Dimensional Travelers Type 5 civilizations have long since overcome the limits of their own universe or have recognized that they do not exist. They also use free energies, which are available everywhere in the cosmos, via their spirit and will. They travel to other dimensions and also use the forces that are available in these worlds, but always in a peaceful way and in the sense of expansion, creative innovation, and consensus among all living beings in space. Type 6 – The Space-Time Folders When a civilization has reached level 6, it moves faster than light. Whether it needs spaceships or similar vehicles for this, we do not know. These beings can fold and shape space and time at will. They can take the shape of the cosmos itself, create matter, decompose it, or change it. They travel multiverses use the powers of other dimensions, and can move up and down in time at will. These beings know that matter is an illusion of mind, and a kind of multiverse supermind controls everything. Type 7 – The Godlike Welcome to the Omega Civilization. As a member of this community, you have achieved absolute immortality. You are equal to God and live in infinite creativity. Matter has largely dissolved or transcended for you. You are a being of dynamics, light, and energy, and live in a world of unlimited possibilities. Technique and technologies have given way to a supermind. Through pure consciousness, you control time and space. Since you know that you are one with everything that is, you behave considerately and always in the sense of all. You know no evil and play like a divine child with the possibilities in space. Physical laws exist for your pleasure and serve you to shape space. In doing so, as a level 7 living being, you can participate in, change, and create diverse habitats. 
when you die in a limited world as we know it today, your immortal consciousness simply migrates to another dimension and lives on there. What you once knew as a level one being as a universe is just a small section in an infinite sea of dimensions and multiverses. In the Omniverse, there is nothing that does not exist. Beings of pure being, such as you are on level seven, are omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. A day on level seven Earth. Now you may wonder if on level seven, the Earth still exists at all. Yes, if you and a few other inhabitants of this world like it, then yes. Others, however, have long since migrated and traveled the Omniverse with the power of their thoughts, or they have created parallel Earths where the water is pink and tastes like raspberry sherbet. Materiality really doesn't matter much anymore at this level, but pleasure does. When you take pleasure in something, you simply create it. At the same time, infinite streams of consciousness reach you from all parts of the universe, which you can survey with your supermind at any time. If an interesting message comes in, you go on a time fold through time and space to that place and maybe live one or two lives in other dimensions before you come back. If something doesn't work out the way you want it to in the world and dimension you're on, it's most likely due to your co-creators. But never mind. If you're experiencing retro earth with its materiality and physical laws and the hammer just won't pound the nail into the wall, then you simply go to the dimension in which you can push the nail into the wall with your finger or to the one in which the nail is already in the wall. If you need a body for an experienced space, you simply create it. When you enter certain dimensions, you automatically take the form that is usual there. No sooner do you intend to participate in a world where you have a yellow luminous body, you have it, and off you go. We say goodbye now and leave you to continue dreaming about what a level seven civilization can do. Before you, thanks to your God-given imagination, go further into the Omniverse. And we'd like to ask you to leave us a comment. Tell us what you think about these theories, and if you believe that such civilizations can really exist. We look forward to your contribution, and we'll see you next time at Simply Space.